What is going on everybody? Welcome to part 19 of our Quantopian tutorial series. In this video and the subsequent videos, what we're gonna be talking about is the Pipeline API, which was released back in October of 2015. The idea of the Pipeline API is to give you a lot more power when it comes to figuring out which of the maximum 500 companies that you can reference in real time regarding their prices, which of the, you know, let's say 8,000 plus companies at any given time, do you, do you want to reference? So in the past, you really only had very crude uh, means of figuring out what those 500 companies were gonna be. Generally, I went by market cap or something like that, and you could do some basic fundamental stuff or whatever, but for the most part, getting yourself to those 500 companies was oftentimes very arbitrary. You weren't able to use as much as you should uh, as far as logic is concerned. So with the Pipeline API, you can begin to apply a lot more logic to the entirety of possible companies before you whittle them down to the 500 maximum that you still can only reference uh, in real time. So uh, I think the best way uh, to understand that is to actually just go through it. But first I'm gonna explain a, just a few things. So the Pipeline API, uh, is referenced in their documentation. You can come here and learn about the Pipeline API a bit more. The only thing I'll bring up before we even get started is when you reference a data set within Pipeline, a data set is a capital D, capital S data set. Um, I can't think of a better name, but the name is also slightly unfortunate uh, because it's actually, it's there is no data within the data set. So uh, you have to apply a factor or a filter, uh, really a factor, to get data from the data set and then you use a filter to filter down the data set. Um, so there is no data by default in the data set. You must apply a factor first to get data from the data set. So just remember that because that, was, that drove me nuts for a little bit. Anyway, uh, so that's pipeline. Um, here are factors. So pipeline has two major things, factors and filters. A factor returns a numerically valued output as opposed to a filter, which is going to return Boolean valued outputs. So you use factors to do like your calculations and stuff like that. Uh, and then you use a filter to, uh, hopefully get that number of companies down to 500 companies. Um, then we'll come over to uh, the next one, built-in factors. These are a bunch of built-in factors that you can use. So you've got the latest value, latest is just the latest value. Uh, drawdown, relative strength index, simple moving average, the volume weighted average price, uh, weighted average value, returns, blah, blah, blah. Um, finally, you can also create custom factors. So if all the built-in factors do not serve you well, you can create a custom factor. Uh, the um, sample of this is actually under sample algorithms. It's not under the pipeline API in the documentation. Okay, let's dive in. I'm going to delete everything here. This is a brand new um, algorithm. And to get started, the first things that we need to do is import the necessary libraries. So uh, the first thing that we have to do is from quantopian.pipeline, we have to import, as you might guess, the pipeline. Next, what we need to do is from quantopian.algorithm, we're going to import attach pipeline as well as a pipeline output. Attach pipeline is how you attach data sets. Pipeline output is actually how you, uh, the return from pipeline output is a data frame. So uh, whatever you assign to the value of the return for pipeline output is the thing that you get to manipulate as you would uh, in the handle data function slash method. So coming down, uh, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to do from Quantopian. Oops, I never finished algorithm. Algorithm. From Quantopian.pipeline.data.builtin uh, import US equity pricing. So to reference press prices via the pipeline, you have to use this data set here. And there are a few built-in uh, data sets with uh, the pipeline. And then finally, we're gonna say from quantopian.pipeline.factors, uh, we wanna import 
simple moving average. So this is, we're gonna use one of the built-in factors. Um, and that's just gonna be a simple moving average. As you might be able to guess, we're gonna apply the simple moving average to the built-in data, which is US equity pricing. Great. So um, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna define our initialize. Um, I I'm gonna call them functions, I think, from here on out. Um, I'm not really sure what they're supposed to be. From Zipline, they're, they're methods, I thought. It's been a while since I really looked in, but I'll call them functions from here on out. So anyways, define initialize, context is what we pass through. This is all part of what we've talked about before. Uh, and then we're gonna define our pipe is equal to the pipeline. So it's just a pipeline object. Then we're gonna attach underscore a pipeline. We're going to attach to pipe. And this one, the name of this pipe is just um, pipeline tutorial. Call it whatever the heck you want. So then in our initialize, we're going to uh, begin with defining um, basically some factors that we want to be a part, and then we will add these to our pipe. So for example, we're going to say, we're going to create a 50 moving average and a 200 moving average. Okay. So the 50 moving average will be a simple moving average. I'm just going to copy that paste. And then here you say the inputs will be equal to, and this would be a list. We just have one element, but you still need to be a list. Uh, this will be uh, US equity pricing. Actually, I bet if you started typing this, I'm used to working in idle, so I don't really have the autocomplete. But anyway, you should, I'm surprised it didn't autocomplete that. Anyway, uh, <laughs> I'll try for more autocompletes later. Anyway, inputs, US equity pricing dot close. And then you say the window length will be 50. Wish I could get it. I'm kind of zoomed in so the text is big and I can't move this over anymore, sorry. Then we're just gonna take this, copy, paste, and then this one is actually just gonna be a 200, okay? Once we're all done there, uh, what we're actually looking for uh, in this case is we're gonna be looking for um, just companies to go long. So what is a, the typically the way that you go long on a company using moving averages? Well, you're looking for where the 50 moving average is above the 200. Okay, so the 50 moving average reacts faster to price changes, 200 slower. So 50 above 200, great. So we are looking literally for um, the 50 to 200 MA ratio. So for example, uh, you could do something like this. We can say pipe.add and then underscore 50 MA divided by underscore 200 MA. And then we're gonna call this the MA ratio. You could also assign it to a new value. You can also add to this pipeline literally 200 MA, stuff like that. But you can also perform rudimentary calculations as you apply it to the pipeline. So there you go. Finally, we're gonna do a, um, a screen here. So basically this will be a, like a filter for us. So set underscore, great darn. <laughs> Wasn't one of the options. Anyway, pipe dot set screen. Uh, we're looking for uh, where the, uh, where MA, well, let's do underscore 50 MA divided by the 200 MA is greater than 1.0. You could also probably get away with, um, never mind. Anyway, moving along, uh, what we're going to do is, um, that's all we actually have to do in our initialize uh, function. So now we're going to come down and we're going to say define before trading start. Uh, as usual, you pass context and data here. Context is the stuff that uh, is related to you personally in your portfolio and all that. Data contains, again, the data that is in the entire universe of companies. Uh, so now what we're going to say is output equals pipeline output. Remember what I said pipeline output does? Uh, so that is going to give us um, a data frame that is the output from this attached pipeline. So that will be a data frame that contains MA ratio, uh, where the index of that data frame is the actual equities, uh, is the equity itself. So before trading start does that, then what we're gonna say is we're gonna say context.my underscore universe. So we're just making a new one here. Universe equals output.sort. We're gonna sort by MA ratio. Um, we want to sort, ascending normally is uh, defaulted. So uh, dot sort is a pandas data frame 
operation here. So re remember, this is now a data frame, so we can do anything we can do to a data frame. So when you sort by default, it will sort in ascending order. We actually want to sort in descending. We want the strongest MA ratio. So uh, ascending will actually be equal to false. And then we're going to say dot I loc. Uh, and this just get, this is a way for you to uh, slice a data frame by row, right? Because normally if you try, if you did not use this and you said like this, you would be trying to reference a specific uh, column basically. So anyway, uh, dot I look, and we're going to take the first 300 values. Now uh, we're going to update underscore universe. And we're going to say the context dot my universe, oops, my underscore universe. And the universe of data is actually going to be the index of this um, here. So remember, this is a data frame. Your universe is a list of equities. So a list of equities with an index. I'm sorry, I'm confusing myself now. The output is a data frame with an index that is equities, but the actual values of the data frame are these MA ratios, whereas the universe wants to just be equities. So the way that we're populating our universe before trading start, so every day, uh, is by context.myuniverse.index. It would be easy to forget that dot index. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're going to, uh, we'll just, uh, We'll just build it. We'll, we'll work on handle data in the next tutorial, but we'll just do something simple here. So define uh, handle data. And then again, with handle data, you pass context and data. If you can, I would have been faster to type it by now. There we go. Uh, and uh, let me pull this up a little bit. And we're going to do log.info. And then we'll do a new line plus the string value of context dot uh, my unit oops my universe dot head and uh, that should be good enough so we'll just log that and make sure we're getting something from this algorithm so uh, we'll go ahead and build here Let's see what we get or if we get an error or something like that if we don't get an error we'll proceed to the next one and actually build a strategy within handle data cool Okay, so we'll cancel the back test. Sure enough, here what we have is um, recall context that my universe is literally the equ uh, is what we assigned or defined as the output only sorted in the first 300. So as you can see here, the the top ticker for us in this case was U R R E. I'm not even sure what that company is in all honesty, but anyway, if that exists, I don't recognize any of these tickers. Uh, but that's the whole point is these are probably stocks that you would never have referenced in the past. Uh, so anyways, no errors. We're correctly referencing the data. So now we're actually ready to build a strategy that references MA ratio. And the only reason we were able to get to this point is via the pipeline API. Without the pipeline API, it just you wouldn't have been able to reference all those companies in the first place and generate the MA ratio. Okay, so if you have questions, comments, concerns, whatever up to this point, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for the support and subscriptions and until next time.